try again yeah again. and try again every day you get just we love our, our job when you're inside there we are joking around we are laughing we are even sometimes our patients will be like guys you're so energetic what is happening yeah, yeah. we love our I job i mean all we have here i think we have each other each other so yes. that is the biggest it's the greatest <laughs> support true. system that we if we are all within the same the age time, group so it's most of the time, even when I live here at work, I say everything that I've gone through at work. People don't even understand the language. But when I come to work, at yeah. least somebody out here understands me. Mm-hmm. But at home, it's You'll quite difficult. You'll be talking difficult. about intubation, CPAP. Yeah. Me being the emotional over my device. patient will die. <laughs> and someone yeah. feels like you guys get used to it. I mean, uh, you don't get used to it. They feel like they don't have a heart anymore. They feel like... Yeah. Can just We've been here since COVID started, and everyone, the numbers in the newspaper, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. numbers in the newspapers of deaths every day. We see them like every day, and it, 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 you just don't get used to it. And we see our patients' pictures on people's status as well. The mm. with, with, the family with candles, says, in the newspapers, everything. The headmaster, all say just like Aww. the sports guys, all of them. They've been here. Yeah. The most important thing that I can say. So. You obviously want to come to it because of the team. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, you feel yeah. the money and you just want to come and join the team. Yeah, because. So, especially when we have the resource, all of us we come. Everybody gives a hand, and when someone like they have to do CPR. So, yeah. It's not like you might be alone and whatever. Yeah. And you literally, even when you are off, you are thinking, are they enough on duty? Yeah. yeah. Can I like I'm go? off today, but I'm here. Same here. So I'm off, off tomorrow, today. and I'm still. I'm off tomorrow. I'm off, off yesterday. Because you know? we are short staff, and you just have to be here. Because mm-hmm. if a CPR has to happen, everybody has to give input. It's, it, it works better. I mean, you can be sick, but you'll just be there. Like, do we have enough people on duty? Mm-hmm. So at the, at the end of the day, by ten o'clock, you'll be like, guys, I'll come. Mm-hmm. Can I tell you the worst part though? Is when you go home and all you hear are the machines. <laughs> you are in bed and you're like, it's my patient, Honeka, is she fine? The machines are like, this one is shouting, resource, this adrenaline, adrenaline. Do you dream about it? Yes, no, I, I do. I, I dream it. about my patient. I do, I get it. I dream about To be honest, patients. for me, when I leave this place, you leave a place. I Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then if there was someone that I know, was about to make it or that I nursed and had hopes that this person will make it and I can tell that the the what the, 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 the condition kept on deteriorating. Mm-hmm. Or you can be at home and then like you hear the patient that you've been nursing for a month passes on. You yeah. know like the way you call mm-hmm. you know, you're just you're just like why? Like you just had high hopes for the you at home you're even just sad for people's families. Exactly. Exactly. You call each other bro, your patient died. You are just died, like yeah. why? And you're off So it feels like now you are the relative of the patient. Yeah. So all the staff will now come and say, just take it. Easy. Yeah, because you know you are close to this patient or yeah. you are like Cause mm-hmm. So it's like you have no choice but to sort of create like an emotional bond with a certain patient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you have to cause the ratio is one yeah. on one. So. Okay. Yeah, but sometimes you might have three or two patients oh, along. Three on one. Mm-hmm. And okay. it happens. It, it happens. happens. It has been happening. Day. Or you get like where there are recesses happening. This patient crashes, that patient crashes, crashes. that patient is crashing. And the worst thing is when the patient crashes, we all leave our patients and go to, to save that life. And if this one is about to crash, there's no one. When we come back, we are starting with this one. Like yesterday, we, we lost three patients. Yeah. Four. Before 12. Before 12. In one day. Is that the highest number you've lost in a day? Four. Imagine Four. we just started at three. Five. No. No, I'm no, asking in a day, day, like in a shift. Oh, no, no, yeah, no it's not the highest number. Oh. Four. 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 This is the highest number. It's, it's four. Ever four. since I started, it's four. Yes. The thing is here, what also makes and you really... Like, Hmm? No, 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 no. Uh, the, the thing is here that makes you really sad is that um, four patients just go in just an hour they are literally 30 minutes they are replaced yeah it's true that is because really, we need to you just clean bed, clean, bed, bed, bed everything it's so patient admission. Admission. even before you're done cleaning like, like now they're they cleaning admission, admission one patient just demised now how do you guys feel about the constant replacements? Mm-hmm. We also feel for the patients because they have nowhere to go. Like How now, we're supposed to be uh, to be having thirteen or fourteen patients. Mm-hmm. 
but because of the um, oxygen, oxygen insufficiency, we can't have all of them. Because yesterday we lost a lot of patients just because of oxygen issues. Yeah. And how you replace them is like they are replaced so fast. I feel like sometimes we, you expect for the, you the, to the, be given like a time for the you space to be must like, be open or something. Yes, you know, for you to feel continue, like all right. But then feel. in just a minute. Admission from Katatura. Admission from Lady it's just Bamba. You, you I want know, to just maybe grieve maybe and just get some. But otherwise. Or sometimes they call like today. It's it's private, it's way, and there's only like yeah. one bed. What do they do? There's only like one bed here. Maybe. And the worst thing is we have people with names. I mean, those rich people that are supposed to be attended to by the private hospitals. The but private due to space, school. they have to come here. And I'll be like, I want to go to a private hospital. Yeah, they're crying. They're going to private. To yeah, we are like, but there's no space, Mama. You have just to be here for a main time. Yeah. So they feel like we are punishing them. It's like we are the one keeping them hostage here. The medical aids, we are not going to help anybody during this pandemic because once it depletes, they just. Thank you. I didn't make a decision. They brought me here, but I got to love it. I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to die. But okay, for me, I was just joking about it last year. My my mission was like, <laughs> um, we want people to go work at the COVID. I said, like, I will go. No, she didn't specify way because it was just starting. We we thought it would never reach our country. Yeah. So one day I was called by my matron and to report at the, their office. I went and they're telling me, oh, he once gave your name to the uh, main chief. You are going to the COVID. I said, I was spinning. I was like, no, I was not serious. So then I had to just um, make peace with it. But then I was, oh, the most thing that I was excited about, it was the experience. Because to be a COVID ICU. That's a family clinic. Yeah. That's oh, also one of the sad situations, showing the family a body. Body. Of a patient that passed on. Is it the pregnant woman? Yeah. yeah. Pregnant girl. So you show the body to them and it's always so traumatizing. Because patient, when the family cries, you start crying, but you have to be strong. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, they came there a lot. But anyway, let's get back to yeah. our motivation. Sorry, but it's okay. You guys can take a minute. <laughs> yeah. You can take a minute. To ask okay. for, uh, for it was, I don't. I for myself, there is no motivation. I just believe it's part of my job, and I have to do it. It's a calling. It's it's part of your job. There is no way that you would just be. You don't need motivation to come and work here. Mm -hmm. But as but the, for the time that you stay here, you learn to love it. You learn to even it teaches you quite a lot of things. You even learn to appreciate life. life, life so, yeah, it's true. I mean, you learn to tell yourself like every single day could be. You just it can just come off like that. It goes. So appreciate yeah, people. You appreciate literally every little thing that you have. Yeah, and so me, and, and me personal, I think also working in in in, 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 in here. It's also the same as in the world because yeah. the patient will come in, mm -hmm. you don't know the status of the patient, and you get COVID there. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I feel we're safer here. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're safer. Yes. You, you know, PPE. so we are yeah. always wearing PPE. Yes. yes. In the world, compared you don't know. To, compared to really uh, some of our yes. colleagues out there in the world, in the what world. they literally come face to face with the patient. With, and the patient mess might even be positive, and you don't know that. But at least here, you know directly that you are working with a positive. Case. And when I was uh, okay, uh, uh, there was a time I went back to the ward last year in November. So when I went back to the ward, imagine it's labor ward where we have our mothers pushing, and sometimes they they feel like they are mm. they are suffocated by the mask. They remove it. This one touches you. This one pulls you. This one breaks in you. So you are just like. At the end of the day, you also forget that when it's COVID, now you have to save a mother and a baby at the same time. Mm. So from there, I got my COVID. I don't think I my COVID. Yeah, I anyway, got my COVID. I think all of us here had COVID. <laughs> no, no, and, and, and also one thing, if, if you are a nurse, it's, it's some point, at some point you don't have, when, when it's coming to emergency, you don't have a special yeah. person. Yeah. So if you are a nurse, and then they say they need you, you just have to go and save. And save. Mm -hmm. So it's we don't calling. really yeah, have choice unless you have a condition that is not going to to let you in but otherwise mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, we usually just tag, we usually allow us young people to go because we have our old people, those are the people that actually have us, yeah, because they taught us everything. They so, we would always want 
let us young people go, go. to the COVID and yeah. then they stay at least. Yeah. Like, like today, we don't even have any senior, we are all young. We never the have any senior. Especially on day now. Yes. On night we have some, but on day we are just yeah. as the juniors. We are yeah. all below the age of 30. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but we're proud of ourselves. We are really yeah. doing the most. Yeah. So, at least every day when you knock off, you know I did something for someone. You today. tried. I speak to the to the uh, relatives when they come inside. You are there to encourage them. You are there to tell them that their person is a fighter. is doing it just to give them hope. 